Thank you very much for joining the Janus Oasis today. I'm Nola Simon, I'm the host. And today I'm thrilled to be joined by Mone Putscher. And this is really testing my German. Did I get it right? I know we did in the test. But you did. <laughs> I did, yay. <laughs> Thank you. She is the founder of Tricon and she's a community strategist, the host of the Building Community podcast. And uh, she's a keynote speaker as well. So she's here today to talk to us about alumni networks and community. Is there anything in that introduction that you'd like to make sure we got in there? No, very good. Thanks for having me, Nola. It's great to talk community with you today. I know. And this is the first, this is the second time we've actually connected, but we connected from, I think it was a LinkedIn Live for somebody and we just had a, like a chat afterwards. So it's That's right. fun to really formalize it. So not that I'm really super formal, but so can you tell me why you really have dedicated your life to helping organizations build better relationships? So no, the rela relationships are what count in life. That's in, in our personal lives and in our business lives. And we know that great organizations are built on the foundation of great people. And we also know that organizations are only as good as their teams are. And in recent years, we've seen that me that the way that we approach work has changed where we want to work, when we want to work, how we want to work, how much we want to work, what impact we want to have with the work that we do. And even more the willingness what we're willing to deal with when we're doing work and ed organizations have learned or some of them are in the process of learning how to adjust to that approach because they're seeing that if they don't their talents leave and when the talents leave all the money leaves as well and knowledge is lost and it's a hit on our reputation and culture in our organization is affected. So there's a lot of downsides to our talents leaving if we can't retain them. And what organizations need to do and why I help them is because I know that if we put our people first, if we build programs that actually allow people to work as they want to work, to build those relationships so we can show them how they can thrive and that they matter to us now and also going forward, then it can have a huge impact, not only on our team members, but also positive impact on the organizations. And that's what we do. That's why we want to bring people together through community. And one of the ways that we do that is through corporate alumni networks. That's right. And you're absolutely right about the, the loss. I, I think that corporations don't even factor in the cost of institutional knowledge that's walking out the door. How do you even calculate that? It's incalculable. So it is really super important. And so I've worked for probably more than five corporations, major corporations. Mm -hmm. I have never come across an alumni network. You see it for customer alumni networks, like Costco, for example, I think has an alumni network, hey, mm -hmm. stuff like that. But I'm not familiar with seeing it in corporate. And I think it's an amazing idea. So what does that look like? So we know that the customer networks, that those are customer communities. Typically, we also see it for universities, right? When yeah. We see that after we finish our degree, they're still interested in staying in touch. And the same kind of goes for organizations. There is an interest for them to stay in touch with their former team members. And there's a huge potential to give back. Like you mentioned earlier, it's that knowledge exchange that could still exist after people leave our organization. And when you imagine this traditional employee life, life cycle that we have, we want to attract talent. We work really hard to recruit the best. We spend a lot of time and effort onboarding them. We work truly hard throughout their time with us to develop them and to retain them and then poof, they're gone from one day to the next, right? So all that time, that money, that effort that we put into this person, into our team member, that is gone. It's out the door and corporate alumni networks are a framework to continue that relationship after that paycheck stops. Um, and it starts, in my opinion, right, for organizations that are considering corporate alumni networks to start at this very first touch point to strategically build a relationship with their community of employees, to have tailored programs and services that fulfill our team members' needs. Um, for them, it's really important that they feel seen and heard and that they matter because that has an impact on our organizational culture. And we can see the, we can see the impact of that. So, in my opinion, every successful organization needs an alumni network where they really focus on their team members, the current ones, and those that have already left the organization so that they can be successful and innovate today, tomorrow, five years, 10 years down the road. So 
it's programs for the team members that are with us and for the team members that have already left. I like that idea, because if you're incorporating that actually from the time of onboarding, you're also going to follow it through the, the employee journey. So after you're no longer considered new, your gift for actually passing through that, that rite of passage, I guess you can call it, is yeah. you get to train the new people. So who's onboarding you or reboarding you? But if you have an alumni network that's really following your journey through the company, that's kind of genius. And then if you do to choose to leave, you're not necessarily sacrificing the relationships that you've invested time into building over the mm -hmm. time that you've spent with the company. I found that the hardest actually when I leave yeah. companies is the people that you really enjoyed. It's hard to walk away from. And the work that you enjoyed and the networks that you built, the knowledge that you have, the way that you can still contribute. And that's, I think, what's so important with those corporate alumni networks. They allow people, while they're no longer with us, to still contribute to our vision and our mission because oftentimes we leave and it's not because we don't like an organization or we don't like a boss or a manager oftentimes it's because we want to be closer to family or for personal circumstances and we still identify with the mission and the vision of the organization so why not be in some way shape or form still involved with what they're trying to do and with what they're trying to contribute to society so that's also one of the ways that you can think of it i know that's good now does this often get and commingled with like employee resource groups is it the same sort of thing it's a bit it's a bit different the employee res the employee resource groups they focus on specific areas and specific groups the corporate alumni networks they're for everybody so for example when we're talking about current and former employees the former employees that could be retirees, for example, people who have extensive experience and who would be super amazing to bring back as a mentor or for a project or as for specific consulting work or as a speaker for some sort of a workshop or an event. It's former interns who've built their networks now and are working elsewhere or apprentices who've mastered their skill or even, and this is sometimes debatable, but I believe that also former consultants and collaboration partners should be included in those type of corporate alumni networks because they have a really valuable outsider's perspective to bring with insider knowledge. So that's the thing, right? People who have insider knowledge but can bring new perspectives. And within an organization, um, it's really important that you don't get into the silo thinking. Oftentimes we just see what we're familiar with within our own four walls. But if people leave and go elsewhere, they improve their skills, they improve their approaches, experiences, their networks. So it's immense value that they can bring back to us when they're still in touch, not even if they come back as a boomerang employee, but also if they're still in touch with us. And oftentimes, and many organizations have that, you mentioned earlier that, that you're not aware of a lot of organizations who have corporate alumni networks, but a lot of them actually have programs and services that me as an organization, we help them build. So it's picnics for current and former employees where you bring them together, right. knowledge exchange in a casual way. It's holiday parties where you invite current and former employees. It's um, events that you open up for everybody or training and development opportunities where you also invite somebody who's already left the organization. Why not? You're already hosting the workshops. If it's a virtual one, it doesn't cost extra. So there are a lot of little nuances where you can bring in people who can connect with the ones that you have currently in the organization to bring additional points of view and expertise in. I think it's a bit of a different approach, but in general, the, the, the purpose is still to, ex to expand knowledge of the people that you currently have in the organization around a shared value, around shared experiences. So there's you know, differences like, and differences. I, I like the mentorship kind of ideas and that sharing of knowledge. And actually that was something that I'd come across before. One of the people that I follow on LinkedIn, he's an expert in networking and net in building networks. And he, he published something recently where he said that the number of silos has really increased because the bridges between different areas of company have really narrowed because people are leaving, right? And so people aren't talking like finances and talking to customer service and like the bridges that are built between the different divisions of the company. They're very narrow because it's really narrow yeah. down to like maybe one or two people. And so information is not necessarily transferring very well through the company. But if you have access to that alumni network and you can really just send mm -hmm. a quick message to say, hey, who do you know in finance that I could talk to? It's like a two second 
in exchange. And it could be really helpful in terms of building up that, ensuring yeah, that network. I agree. And we've seen now during the last few years of the pandemic that our networks have actually shrunk and not expanded. Yes. So we need every help we can give as organizations to our team members to actually reinforce them, to build new connections and to build authentic connections, not just on the surface, like virtual, but also opportunities in real life where people can connect and get together. Mm -hmm. That's right. And that sometimes with the retirees, but it's very rare that they actually commingle, right? Like a lot of times they celebrate the retirees just by themselves and maybe some of the executives and they haven't necessarily brought in like the current staff who are yeah. maybe doing the jobs that those people left. So that would yeah. become. And also if you're talking about retirees, this is usually the question that I get, why would an organization even want to stay in touch with their team members? And it's what you just mentioned. It's the mentorship, it's the knowledge exchange, but it's also people who want to come back as boomerang employees, people who want to rotate in and out because maybe today the scenario in the organization isn't right for them, but three years or five years down the road, it may be again. They have super added value to bring. They are also brand ambassadors. If you're thinking of the retirees, but also other people that leave who speak positively about an organization when they're at an event, when it comes up in communications, when they see, for example, I don't know, on social media, bad feedback and they want to rectify and give their thoughts and say, hey, my experience was this with this organization. There is a metric out there that's called employee lifetime value. You're familiar with the customer lifetime value more on the marketing and, marketing and sales side. The employee lifetime value focuses on our teams and it's the net value that a team member generates over the time that they engage with us as organization and not necessarily that they are being paid by us as an organization. So that is two different points of view. If we stop giving a paycheck, but we're still in touch with that employee or former employee and people still provide value to us, we paid them for X amount of months, but they're in touch and provide value over 15 more years, every okay. year and there. That is immensely valuable for team members. And there is ways to calculate that. We do that with some customers. There is no formula to it. You really have to dig deep and look at the person and what their salary was and how they're going to engage. So concrete examples for engagement, for example, let's say I'm a person who's been with my organization for 10 years and salary benefits all the nine yards they've been x amount of dollars and now i'm leaving and i'm still in touch with the organization because i like my team i like what the organization stands for i like their causes and i want to contribute and let's say i want to be a lecturer for the team members or for customers of theirs to just contribute my expertise that's added value for training and development that Elsa would have to pay somebody externally. Then, like we mentioned earlier, I wanna come in and mentor new team members because I just like to share my knowledge. That's knowledge exchange. And then I wanna come in and volunteer for community work. Pick up trash when we, when we all walk together on a river walk or, or help out in the soup kitchen. That is free labor for corporate social responsibility activities of the organization. Then. Like we mentioned earlier, right? I'm a brand ambassador when I speak positively about the organization, its products or services, but also I help with employer branding. If I want to talk to those people positively who are interested in potentially working at this organization. And then like you mentioned earlier, right? If somebody asks me, Hey, do you know somebody in accounting? Is there any expert that you can connect me to? Yes. I extend my network and the network has not stagnated, it's typically grown and expanded further beyond the organization that it was in. So I have more value to add. And I also, for example, if I'm working at an organization that still wanna buy their products or consume their services, and I tell others to do the same, that's business development that we're helping with. Money again for the organization. And then, like we said, if you see bad reviews on Google or on a job site and you give your own feedback and add a five-star rating and say, hey, my experience was this or that. That's word of mouth and marketing. Mm -hmm. And then we're testing new products and features or services, for example, and I want to give feedback. They ask me because I'm an insider in a, some sort of a way, but also an outsider. So I can give valuable feedback from both perspectives. I help product development. There's a lot of different areas within the organization that have a concrete added value that you can put a dollar amount to if you're looking really closely and the last and the biggest probably is the boomerangs it's that clearly 
the team members who've left us and who've left us in good standing, they're a pre-vetted talent pool. We know what to expect from them. We know their expertise. They're super fast in ramping up again. There's been an, a survey, I think, done by Enterprise Alumni, and they saw that about 80% of people would return to a former employee. And for employees, that's really valuable because we see that it takes about 50% less time to to onboard and to hire somebody who's been there and 70% less time for them to actually become productive because they know the other team members, they know your policies, they know your value, they know your systems, they know how to work there. Uh, also if it's a bit later. So that's immense value in time and effort saved. Um, and that's key here. People typically also stay longer when they come back. They don't yeah. have this, the grass is greener on the other side symptom yeah. anymore. Exactly. They already know what to expect and come back. Exactly. And that actually is something that I've been seeing in headlines recently is there's people who are leaving because of the great resignation, but they're also coming back yeah. because it's not what they expected. So yeah. is there something specific in the culture that has to be present for a company to be able to retain a relationship like that once people actually quit and leave and they're not getting that paycheck anymore? Is there some kind of magic sauce that you've noticed that's common in, in the companies that tend to offer these alumni networks? I think there's two practices that make organizations successful with alumni networks and both have to do with the organization's attitude towards their team members. So the first I would say is if you start building that relationship, not at the end when people exit, then it's way too late. But yeah. if you start building that relationship as soon as people come in at the very first touch point, and oftentimes this very first touch point is before they even come in to have an interview with you. That's once they see that you have a job opportunity open, when they start researching your organization, you want to already have the word out that you're an organization that takes their team members seriously, their needs seriously, that wants this relationship, not only while you're there, but um, this team for life thinking, this, it's a framework that, that we built at Thrycon, but it's that thinking for the corporate alumni networks that you're a team member, no matter what, once you enter and join the organization, you're with us. And that already is really attractive to organizations. We know that from the big consulting firms, they go out to universities and they promote, hey, you want to work with us because we have this huge network. Also, if you leave us, you have this network of other consultants and former consultants for the rest of your lives. And that is attractive to talent who just come out of university, to talent who want to switch. So it's this added value that you have. And I think this attitude towards, hey, I want to build this relationship with you and not end it. That's a really good approach to, to be successful. And the second, and that kind of goes hand in hand, maybe is even a little bit more important even than that is we need to stop thinking of somebody who's leaving our organization as a traitor, right? <laughs> yes. They're not doing, they're not harming us on purpose and saying, oh my God, you're so bad. I want to leave you. Oftentimes it's personal reasons why we're leaving. And to me, when this topic comes up, I try and impress to our clients that community and these employee communities are leadership matters. It needs to come from top down from the leader, senior leadership, right down the hierarchy that it's okay. If people have a different choice for their own career, if they can't or don't want to be with the organization at the moment, we still need to support them with whatever they decide is the best approach for where they are in their lives. No organization is right for every employee at every stage of their career development. And that's like an analogy that I bring up and I know there's controversy around it and you're probably going to get that from some of your listeners too after that. But I always say we need to treat our team members like we treat our children when they leave for college. They turn our backs on us, they leave our house, they go to college, they may or may not call us regularly. They may want to come back for vacations and family celebrations and reunions. They may reach out if they need help and run out of money, <laughs> <laughs> but <laughs> we still keep our hands and arms open and welcome them back in if they want to come back in. And that's how I feel we should treat our employees. It's a transition it's hard to go in and out. It's, it's really, it's fluid. Just you are with us, period and then come and go 
as is right for your life. And if at some point we have an opportunity again, that's a great fit for you and where you are a great fit for us, please rejoin us because we value you. It's a crafting a sense of belonging really and as part of that community, yeah. even if you're actively employed or not actively employed, but you're part of the ecosystem, you're part of the community mm-hmm. and you feel like you belong. And you really feel like you're being belonging. nurtured all the way along. And that belonging is not something, Nola, that you can tell people. You can't say, oh, we value you. That is something they need to feel. You use the right word, feel a sense of belonging, right? And you can only do that by really providing them. When we're designing those services and those programs for corporate alumni networks, we really go out and we talk to the employees, to the team members, not go with what leadership thinks they want. Mm oftentimes and that's why it's so hard to quantify it's easy to quantify the value for organizations what is the value for the organization of such a corporate alumni network but it's really hard to quantify it and put the finger on it for when you're looking at from the perspective of the team member because every team member needs something different and you need to make sure that you put together a portfolio where everybody's needs can be met where maybe somebody's need may be uh further development of their own skills with workshops, with trainings, events that they can attend for free, even outplacement services. That's really controversial as well. Why would I help somebody who wants to leave my organization with finding the next role? Another person may be interested in networking. So opportunities to attend events, opportunities to connect on a community platform directly with others who are there or who were previously there. So. They have totally different needs. Newsletters, some have that too. I'm not a big fan of newsletters, but sometimes they're the right tool because former employees want to see what's going on in the organization. What, where are former employees landing now? What roles do they have? What are their accomplishments, personal and career? And then also bringing in the personal perspective a lot. So that's why I mentioned earlier, company picnics. A lot of people focus on this work-life balance now and Organizations need to help their teams do that. One of the things that has been really successful in our portfolio, what we build is accountability partner programs. So that's organizations helping their team members be accountable to the goals they set for themselves, both for personal Mm -hmm. goals and career goals. So if my goal is I don't want to work 10 hours a day anymore, I only want to work eight hours a day with such a program, the organization can help me do that. It's funny, one of my previous guests, he talked an awful lot about nurturing as well, but he also talked about having personal mission statements for like an overall arch arching mission statement for your life that incorporates the Mm -hmm. work that you do, but it's also for your, and that's how you build with the employee and then even help them once they leave, because they're really fulfilling their personal statement, which they may need to go outside of the organization to complete, but it's it's that level of commitment and investment in the individual that really creates that sense of loyalty and belonging. And people need to feel that the organization is giving not because they want something in return. They need to feel that the organization is giving because they value the team members and not because all the benefits that I just said, that's the reason. So it always needs to be the people first. And that's really important when you're having conversations with senior leadership, why they want to do that. The first answer shouldn't be because we need boomerangs because we're lacking talent or we want to retain our employees. And Um, that can be woven into all of the communications. So like you said, like the employer branding, when the person's first researching the company, the job descriptions, like the onboarding process, how the managers are trained, that narrative needs to be woven through like the whole entire employee journey. And this team for life thinking, um, it's part Ideally, it's part of every fiber of your organization. This is not one department who implements, who implement that. It's not typically the people that we work with are senior leadership and HR and people representatives. So that's where it's usually starting in an organization, but every single department needs to live it. It's not a silo within the organization where you say, okay, we're doing these events and that's not done with it. It's something that is part of the fiber of every organization, of every decision, everything that you do in the organization, ideally 
will have a community component because you can bring them in for so many different reasons. Like we said earlier, with sales, with business development, developing new products and services, with marketing. So it's something that's like getting embedded in processes and procedures. And it's just a way of being and operating rather than something that's just bolted on and that's nice to have, which is something that you see often with rewards and recognition programs, for example. Exactly. It's not something that's going to be fly by night that's going to disappear as soon as the next budget round goes. <laughs> and talking about budget, this you're right about bringing that up. You need to invest time and also financial resources into doing that. But there's also concrete output that you get. And it's not something like any community and like any relationship that you build. It doesn't happen from one day to the next when you say, so now we're starting this and tomorrow snap. We're great at it. And this is all working and running smoothly. Building relationships, just like building community, it takes time. It takes a lot of effort. In the beginning, it's a lot of holding hands, a lot of one-on-one -on -one conversations, a lot of strategy, a lot of convincing, oftentimes of leadership, because first you need to start within the organization before you can actually bring in all the members and the community efforts. It's not something that happens from one day to the next. It's a mid to long-term perspective, like any community effort is, but it's well worth it. Right. Are there best practices that you would like to add in there other than what we talked about? There, <laughs> there are like this team for life approach. It has a clear USP for the organization and also for internal, external and future team members. So what's really important, what is the best practice is to communicate that very clearly. Um, so that people can actually value that offer so that you can build a program that's meaningful and so that it actually can help shape the culture of your organization and like all organizations want now attract top talent. So that's communicating it really clearly. The other is I'm a big believer in not reinventing the wheel. I'm a big fan of repurposing. And a lot of organizations already have programs and services for their employees and for their team members that can be put under this umbrella of an employee community. And um, it's really important to start, pick a few, start slowly, reframe, shift a little bit, right? Don't try too much at once. Focus maybe on perfecting a few of the programs that you previously had and adjust them slowly and then move on to the next. So it's not having to build 10 new programs from one day to the next. It's about looking at what you already have, repurposing, reframing, and then building upon that. And maybe a third best practice would be, like we mentioned, build that team spirit on day one give and support, be kind when people want to leave, celebrate their wins while they're with you, but also celebrate and appreciate their future growth as they're on their way out the door, because trust me, they will appreciate it. And as you and as I know, people will remember how they're being treated at the end. If you're thinking of it as the end of, a, of an empl employment relationship, people will remember and judge you based on that. Yeah, that's that Maya Angelou quote that often floats around on the internet, which is, okay. you may not remember what people did, you may not remember what people said, but you are going to remember how they made you feel. Absolutely. <laughs> and I, absolutely. I probably didn't quote that word for word, but that's essentially the upshot. No, that's absolutely true. You find that it's mostly, is it middle managers who tend to feel like that? Is it particular to middle managers or have you noticed, like, where does the work need to be done to educate people to... I think it's top management. It's, it's starting with good examples from top management. If top management reacts positively when people leave and not negatively, if you celebrate people's wins and thank them graciously. Apple does this really well. I was mm -hmm. earlier this year at a Mac store in a mall and all of a sudden you hear like a whole group of people applauding and clapping. They were sending a team member off to their next role. So oh. celebrating them like they were having a birthday celebration. Oh, that's really neat. amazing. And this is how you need to do it. Yeah. Ideally, top leadership will say, everybody, if somebody leaves, we celebrate them. We're not bringing up, oh my God, we're so sad you're leaving. But you're like, okay, we're so happy. We're still going to be in touch with you on your next adventures. We wish you all the best. Let us know how we can support you and then actually do it. So yeah. that vibe comes down from top management and it trickles down. 
And then everybody will catch on if you see that's the lived, that's thinking that's being lived in the organization. I actually did a post and I asked people to tell me what their most vivid memories of being in the office are, because I'm always interested in how people choose the office versus working remotely or they work from anywhere or anywhere outside of an office. And I asked them like what they remember most about being in the office and what they brought up was the celebrations. So like baby yeah. showers and birthday parties and celebrations of like achievements. And that's mm -hmm. what really sticks in the memory because they have to yeah. get up in front of a group And there's nothing like being applauded. Like you actually have a physical reaction. I'm literally having chills right now, remembering times where I had to get up in front of a group of people and I was being applauded. You remember it at a core level that you don't in a virtual event. So there are definitely yeah. things that are better in person. And I love that concept of adding like the exit <laughs> into the yeah. celebration because that's just going to craft a core memory. And it's yeah. going to be positive. And what maybe I can also add, Nola, is it's about the terminology. Because you just mentioned exit. It's not an exit. It's moving yeah. from one type, one type of engagement to another. And that's why, and I wasn't very aware of this as we're talking now, but typically we don't talk about current and former employees. Typically, when we're talking about the alum, corporate alumni networks, my team and I, we talk about internal and external team members. Ah. Internal and external, it's a shift in and out. Yeah. And if you're saying former or past, that's negatively connotated already with something that is gone and has ended. But the yeah. relationship with your team members in a corporate alumni network in that community, it's still ongoing. So it's not former and current or past and today's, but it's internal and external team members. Somebody yeah. who's now elsewhere, but who may want to come back and who's still in touch. That's right. But honestly, with the future of work, terminology is a massive thing. I know this myself, but it's unwiring that. So If people are looking to do stay interviews, they know somebody is considering, do you advocate for stay interviews or not? For stay interviews? No. No, I don't either. No, <laughs> no, it's no, because people always have a reason to leave and people are sticky. They don't leave easily. They already have done a lot of thinking, a lot of research, a lot of soul searching. It doesn't make sense to convince somebody to stay or to give them more money or throw new opportunities at them. Let them venture out and experience what they want to experience and then welcome them back when they're ready to come back. So I don't think this retaining type of effort is so effective. I think it makes sense to allow people to have experiences elsewhere and then welcome them back with open arms when the time is right and the scenario is right. I love that. That's perfect. We'll make sure that your LinkedIn is on the show notes. Is there anything else you wanted to mention briefly? So uh, my final message maybe is well, it takes time and effort to build those relationships and to scale a community of employees, but it's worth it. So for your listeners, go out and make your communities thrive. A thriving workplace is a great thing. Thank you so much. And uh, we'll throw in your website there as well. And I'll put in the podcast for Building Communities podcast so you can listen to Simone directly. And she's a great podcast. I've listened to her. She's fantastic. Thank you so much for making the time. I appreciate it. Thank you, Nola. Simone wanted me to talk to you about a masterclass that she's actually offering later this fall. If you've been impressed with her passion and her enthusiasm for building community and helping organizations, do better with their staff, then you may want to check out this masterclass that ThreeCon is offering in the fall. It's to help organizations build their own employee communities. It's an interactive online program where senior executives and HR leaders build their community engagement strategy from the ground up, guided by the ThreeCon team, so you can easily and effectively pivot and adjust to the new work movement. And if you want, you can connect with Simone on LinkedIn or check out the uh, the website. Everything is in the show notes. So if you'd like to uh, check that out, I highly recommend it. I really believe in the power of the alumni networks that uh, Simone is building, and uh, I really encourage you to check it out. Shout out, call to action, and thank you. <laughs>